the steps in the game. And one blank rain. Who the steps in the game? And one blank rain. Who the steps in the game? Steps in the game. Steps in the game. Who the stepped in the game? In this video, I'm gonna tell you why you don't hate Nintendo Switch Online. I know that sounds a little controversial due to, you know, um, recent events, but stick around and we'll see where this goes, okay? Nintendo uh, released the expansion pack for Nintendo Switch Online. And that expansion pack details a couple of things. There's a couple things added to the already existing $20 service that was originally free when the Nintendo Switch had Nintendo Switch Online um, service as a beta for existing Switch customers from 2017 to 2018. Those additional features that they're adding are additional virtual console games from the Nintendo 64 era, um, and Genesis games from the 16-bit era. In addition to that also, uh, there's free DLC for the Animal Crossing New Horizons game and maybe other games in the future, we don't know. This just appears to be a service that Nintendo is rolling out right now that'll provide premium features for those that want to pay the premium price, which is now $50 a year versus the $60 a year that Sony and Microsoft um, want to bring forward. Now there's a lot of interesting things I could talk about with there, like the hypocrisy for some YouTubers and the gaming press out there that at one point in time specifically said, A, they wanted a separate subscription service just for virtual console games, which this effectively is, and B, they also um, wanted to acknowledge that at some point Nintendo would be trying to go to a $60 model just like Sony and Microsoft are, which is why they downplayed the $20 uh, service that Nintendo originally launched for um, Nintendo Switch Online. But, you know, that's that's re really neither here nor there. You can go and you can scrub Google, you can scrub YouTube, and you can see how people were saying, hey, look, Nintendo is going to eventually compete and do the, the $60 thing. This is $50, so it's $10 a little bit cheaper or whatever, but they're offering you something for it. And opinions are going to vary wildly because people tend to think that hey uh, with another service you get free games blah 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 but people know what psn which is 60 dollars uh, on ps ps psn plus um ps plus and on uh, xbox live gold what they kind of give you now is free games every month they're, they're not the triple a great games that you think they are now they're kind of rolling that back for their own streaming services uh, playstation with, with ps now and xbox live with game pass and game pass ultimate so it appears to be that um, all the services for all the consoles, they're kind of rolling away all the all the quote unquote free benefits that they used to give to people that people used to cling to as a benefit for signing up for said service. And of course, there's PC gamers out here that really just want everything to be free, which I I'll do that in a separate video. But apparently, just by you paying your ISP means every service you connect to. You shouldn't be charged for. I didn't know that AT&T pays a remote server's bills, but that's a whole nother conversation. I can drill that hole into the wall as many times as possible, but that's a really bad argument coming from some people with a huge following on YouTube, but they don't want to do a debate with me because they're afraid and that's fine. Well and good. We'll, we'll come to that later. Here we go. We're going to talk more about how you don't hate Nintendo Switch Online. So I'll tell you the first reason why you don't hate Nintendo Switch Online. And that's because mm, features versus services, you kind of don't really know what it is that you're mad about, really. I'll make a key distinction here. You have system features and you have network features. The majority of the complaints that I see, both online, in person, or, or what have you, from print articles, even gaming media has this wrong a lot, they'll confuse features because the whole goal is to compare Nintendo Switch to Wii U and previous consoles or 360 or what have you, to compare features on those systems versus Nintendo Switch. And then try to say, hey look, Nintendo Switch Online kinda isn't there because it's missing this stuff that was free here or that was only um, $50 a year here or whatever on the previous platform. That's cool, but you gotta compare apples to apples and not apples to oranges. We can't complain about Nintendo Switch Online 
of Nintendo Switch not having folders because Wii U and 3DS had folders. Those are system level features. They have nothing to do with Nintendo Switch Online. Nintendo Switch Online essentially is a gateway service to connect you to other Nintendo players. That's basically what you're paying for, it's matchmaking. Hey, we're gonna take all these accounts, Nintendo accounts for Nintendo Network, and we're gonna group them. And it means that, hey, if you wanna play with this person over here, we'll connect you with this person over here. And you're able to play said games together, similar to Xbox Live, TeamSpeak, and any other service um, that people have used for the longest time, Roger will go. I'm really dating myself on that one. Um, but if you want to go back and do voice chat and team up with other people or whatever, you can do it with that service. And then we have varying complaints based on what those features are versus whether they're for the network service or whether they're for the system. Folders are inherently built into the Wii U and 3DS OS base. It has nothing to do with the network. You don't connect to a network to see those folders. There's not a server somewhere managing that. There's not a contract between Nintendo and Amazon to make sure your folders are on your, your system. Those folders come at the cost of the console that you bought. It's part of the firmware that Nintendo custom built for that hardware. It has nothing to do with the service that you pay for um, once a month or once a year, what have you. But that seems to be lumped into the conversation. So folders, yeah, get that whole thing out of there. That's one, <laughs> one thing that needs to be swept away from there. The other thing, is other things like Meverse um, and messaging, things like that. So this is a two prong. This is a two pronged attack that I see a lot of the times because you'll talk about Meverse. The same people that used to complain about how bad Meverse was, by the way. Let's not let's not pretend like Wii U didn't really have it bad, and there was a lot of vocal minority out here complaining about Wii U while trying to champion it at the same time. A lot of that happened. But a lot of what made Miiverse what it was, was that it was built directly into the OS from scratch for Wii U. Um, it was added on to 3DS after the fact, and we all know how that went. It wasn't really as full featured as it was on Wii U. Messaging was built into Wii as kind of like a layman's email relay system. And you still had to have friend codes and all that other kind of stuff and get them to respond in a basically like an email back and forth type situation. And essentially what's happening here is saying that some type of messaging existed on both Wii U and Wii means that group messaging and chat that exists on Xbox Live should be there on Switch for free. Even on the original Xbox, the firmware for free requests and all that kind of stuff, all that was there in 2001, well before Xbox Live launched in 2002. You have to have it there on the system first. None of this stuff is just sitting in a server somewhere waiting for any type of system to be built and connect to it. Not for these consoles, it doesn't work that way. They build these, these services with that console in mind. So Nintendo Switch had Nintendo starting from scratch, rebuilding Nintendo Network, because Nintendo Network was built upon Nintendo Wi-Fi connection for Wii. And those all use old GameSpy servers back in the day, and they're now dead. That you know they don't even host any any of that kind of stuff for Nintendo anymore. They're gone. That entire building, you know, had Windows 98 servers and all that other kind of stuff. We hear all these complaints saying that the same thing is happening with Splatoon, which obviously isn't the case anymore. Um, so that entire service was wiped from scratch, and it was completely rebuilt. Um, in a worldwide fashion, and that was part of the reason that Nintendo partnered with DNA, which is the mobile um, the mobile game um, developer or what have you, to help with their online infrastructure, in addition to planning on how to release mobile games and apps for their different consoles and services, which is why the, one of the one of the great things I've seen about Wii U and Switch is the parental control app that nobody talks about on both of those consoles. They work really well. You can drill down and basically manage anything that you want on those. I know hashtag daddy woes, but that app works really well. So they've managed those kind of implementations and they know how to plan a worldwide release of a game such as Super Mario Run. And no matter how many people came in, like record amount of people joining a session at one time, they're able to handle it. They don't have to worry about servers crashing and stuff like that. You will have your 
how can I say this, exemptions, because Smash Brothers has worldwide appeal, and anything that they do worldwide at the same time is going to be hectic. So uh, Smash Brothers, any character launching or anything like that, you're probably going to get a lot of uh, bad connections that night, typically speaking, because everything's going to be crowded. Makes sense. That game <laughs> has sold exceptionally well. Uh, it is clearly the best-selling fighting game of all time. So... You know, and that franchise is the best-selling fighting game franchise of all time. So, I mean, take that as you will. A lot of confusion happens between firmware and network services. If you're going to pay for Nintendo Switch Online, you're paying for the network service itself. And the network service itself has nothing to do with any of the features, uh, if you will, as far as what you, what you do. Oh, I can click a username, or I can do this, or I can do that. You're paying specifically for the infrastructure being available for you to connect to A, buy games, B, have backups of your saves and whatnot since those sit on a server for them to sync. You're paying for the syncing of that server and the changes that are going to be reflected. And you're paying for your your actual connection service. I got to say something that, that, and I want to make this abundantly clear server hosted games are extremely rare on consoles. I'll say that again for the cheap seats. Server hosted games are extremely rare on consoles. They're kind of rare on PC as well. Unless it's a free for all game, uh, a lot of the battle royale games, they're typically hosted on servers and stuff like that. Games like Fortnite and whatnot. Those games, other games, other online multiplayer games are legitimately, they're peer to peer. Call of Duty uh, for the longest time has been peer-to-peer. -peer. Halo for the longest time has been peer-to-peer. -peer. Whoever joins the match first or has the fastest connection first, depending on how the, the software was written, they become the host of the game. People join said game and they depend on that, that peer's connection to run the entire game. So one person is running the entire game and other people are virtually participating in that hosted event that that user has on their console. The same is true with Nintendo Switch and every um, Nintendo console before that that connected online. It's a peer-to-peer -peer connection for the most part in, in the majority of their games. So I don't understand the whole, well, we want uh, server-hosted games. And I, I heard a lot of complaints, um, a lot of fake PC fanboys want to feign and say that Microsoft uh, has server-hosted games for every single, but if you just read the SDK for what Microsoft has for developers, they do not have it's a it's a complete it's a complete tool set for how to create your own peer-to-peer -peer, um your your own peer-to-peer -peer matchmaking scenario for your game that you're building so microsoft knows that's there microsoft knows it's happening and microsoft at no point ever said every single game that's on xbox live will be completely server hosted that's not a thing you're still going to connect to games that are going to be peer-to-peer -peer, just like you would for any other console that exists right now that's going to be the majority of the games that you play. So I hear there's a lot of that happening as far as what a network service is. And you're not getting guaranteed server hosted. You're not getting um, server bound connections when you play a multiplayer game. What you are getting that server bound for every single console is matchmaking, which is what you're paying for on Nintendo Switch Online, Xbox Live Gold and um, PS Plus. That's what you're paying for. You're going to connect through Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo's gateway to play said games online. Whether you're playing cross-platform with other players, a PC doesn't really have to pay for anything like that. Or you're playing with just Nintendo players, just Xbox players, or just PlayStation players. Because the entire thing is you're connecting with a proprietary network that Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo have built. So you're paying for that, ser that server upkeep for those other, other users that are connecting so you can have an optimal connection to play against each other. Other than that, your only scenario out of that is you create your own multiplayer service. You hack your Nintendo Switch, Xbox, or PlayStation, or what have you, create your own proxy server for them to connect to, and they pretend that they're connected to Nintendo Switch Online. You emulate Nintendo Switch Online, and then you host your own peer-to-peer um, -peer sessions yourself. Have your own peer-to-peer -peer server, and then you run your own games that way. It can be done. There's proxy servers that exist for a lot of older, um, a lot of older games out there. There's a lot of server-based games like Fantasy Star Online that people build entire um, servers for that you can play those games for. So it can be done if that's what you really want to do. 
But the whole goal for a lot of these trolls is to just complain and say it's not there, even though the vast majority of these console games don't use what they're talking about. And the vast majority of popular PC games don't use that either. The network services that a lot of people talk about are weird things that are system level situations. When you talk about friend lists and stuff like that. Now, while friend list capacity can be server bound, um, a lot of that is still tied to firmware too, because it will require a firmware update to update the amount of registers, which is basically just going to be a register in memory for how many, how many friends can be on a list, how many friends can be in a group, if a group actually exists on said hardware or on said server, and whether they can communicate with each other privately or only while a game session is going. Uh, we all know that you know you can have friend groups and whatnot on PSN and Xbox Live Gold and, and uh, things of that nature. While on Nintendo Switch, you don't have that kind of thing. You typically, if you're even going to have voice chat or even have some type of grouping, group messaging technology, you have to do so through the Nintendo Switch Online app. And supported games have different um, different lobbies in there that you can join. And sometimes it's free for all chat in there, or you can do private one v one chat in there uh, Mortal Kombat 11 is probably the the best example of that that when you start a game and if that person has Nintendo switch online app open on their phone it will automatically message the person that you're going against and give them a notification on the Nintendo switch online app and say hey look do you want to start a voice chat session with this person because they're online you press a button boom they start talking you know you can either use the speakerphone on your phone or put your, put your Bluetooth headset in and now you got a wireless connection and you're voice chatting while you're gaming and you don't have to connect to some weird Bluetooth headset and hook it up to your console and all that other kind of foolishness, which most people do. And, and I think that's another thing too. We talk about the whole voice chat thing. I've done a whole nother video on this and how weird it looks. But a lot of these, if you listen to a lot of the vocal minority on YouTube and how they talk about, hey, well, you can't just connect directly to the console or you just don't have voice chat directly in the console. Why do you want a USB cable hanging out the side of your head, hanging, hanging onto your console while you play online to chat with somebody the console was wireless to begin with for a reason ease of use you don't want to have to connect the cable that's one extra cable that you have to deal with yes we know that we're talking about reliability and the majority of people that connect online wired cuts down on a lot of the quote-unquote interference unless you're playing with a lot of pro players that know how to connect up a wireless network but that's more on that later that's the long-term video that i would never do for networking but there's a lot of issues with people not understanding what they're dealing with. So if you're talking about a system level feature and you're talking about, hey, well, can we have this, this many um, friends in my friends list or this many people in a group where we can do voice chat with and whatnot, you want those things to be there. They have to be part of the system firmware first which means that the system has to be built with that in mind. It's not a computer and then you just install the voice chat app. There's a bunch of abstract layers when you're talking about a console that have to be enabled as far as security goes or just the application layer itself and how a game is gonna stack and how it's gonna interact with said voice chat. Because there are games, If say if you added it now, there are games that came out for Switch in 2017 when that wasn't even a thing. So now you have to re-release firmware that's not only going to work for future Nintendo Switch games that talk to that firmware, they also have to work with older games that did not even know that that resource for it was there for said voice chat. How is that gonna work in retrospect? Are you gonna then tell those developers, either first party or third party, to go back and patch their games? Or are you just gonna leave it there and leave all the rest of the older games broken because you started this in the middle of the generation instead of at the beginning when you planned it? Clearly speaking, Nintendo Switch was not built with this in mind. So to complain about Nintendo Switch Online not having it from the beginning is not a complaint or a fault against Nintendo Switch Online. It's a complaint and a fault of Nintendo Switch as a console and what you bought it for. That's why I, <laughs> the, that's why the video is titled this way. You're not really mad at Nintendo Switch Online. You're mad at Nintendo Switch because the feature that was there built in for it, the networking that was built in for it, isn't what you expected it to be. It wasn't built like Xbox Live. It wasn't built like Wii U. Those features aren't there because Nintendo didn't plan for it to be there when they started building the OS for this console in 2016. They took whatever feedback they had and said, this is how we're gonna build it. 
games first. We're going to make it super lightweight and go from there. All the other additional stuff will work around it, which is why you have a separate app for voice chat. Everybody complained about it and said it wasn't good. The call quality wasn't good and all this other kind of stuff. Now you have this. This is what we cannot complain about. You have superior call quality on a Nintendo Switch Online app. Superior. I think the only thing that would be better than it than things that are dedicated voice chat apps. There's no call quality that is qu clearer on any other console than that app. I don't know if people don't like it, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Hey, I want it to just be built into the console. Okay, cool. But who really games without their phone right next to them? Everybody's tweeting while they're gaming. That's, that's just a thing. People are tweeting while they're playing a game from their computer on a separate screen. That's just a thing. People are multitaskers nowadays. So I really don't understand the excuse of I have, I'm forced to have my phone. You have your phone with you anyway. Yeah, so it appears that a lot of the complaints are about the system itself. And so if you didn't like how Nintendo Switch was built, why did you buy the console? Nintendo planned to have their online like this from day one. You don't like the system. You don't like the firmware. And if you don't like the firmware, there's only one reason why you're complaining and trying to blame it on Nintendo Switch Online. Either you regret your purchase or you want Nintendo to be like Sony and Microsoft. And Nintendo can't be like Sony and Microsoft after they already built a console to not be like Sony and Microsoft. So in the future, for any system that you wanna buy from Nintendo and you want their online to be like them, if you look at the reviews for that console and you see how the system software is set up and you know that it's not providing these things, then don't buy that console. But you bought the console and you want them to retroactively make it the way that you want it to be. That's the real truth and that's what you don't want to admit. Kind of hilarious, but that's the point of this video. You actually don't hate Nintendo Switch Online. You hate Nintendo Switch. And I just proved why. It, everything that you don't like about it as far as quote unquote online is actually a firmware feature. Now, if you wanna actually complain and have a legitimate complaint, which is what I corrected, I corrected in another YouTube video by another YouTuber. He's a developer for, I guess he helped do a lot of the emulation porting for Shantae. But Modern Vintage Gamer, I, I replied to one of his videos as soon as he posted it, said, hey look, um, yeah, you can't complain about the Ethernet port on the back of the Switch OLED because Nintendo Switch is capped no matter what you do. Their bandwidth is capped up and down from an average of 50 megabits up and 50 megabits down. So talking about, hey, I have fiber internet and this isn't working as I plug into Ethernet is kind of weird. Now me myself, I've had yeah, gigabit fiber internet since 2016. And I've known that Wii U, Wii, 3DS, and now Switch have been capped. Wii U was capped at 25 megabits per second. Wii was about the same. And Nintendo Switch is capped at around 50. The most I can get on a really good day is around 47 up, um, maybe 37 down on a Friday. And during the week when nobody else is around, I get close to 50. But it just depends. It depends on where you live. You can you can ping other different servers, and you can run. Uh, so what I what I do is I would run um, I would run iperf, and I would do it from a different location to a different Nintendo server because you can you can just run a you can run a packet tracer command. I mean you can run you can just run you can just manage packets, and you see where all these different servers are coming from. Find all the different hosted servers for Nintendo in different parts of the country or other countries or what have you try to ping them, try to set up iperf on them, and run the bandwidth test. And then you'll see what the bandwidth is. It's it's gonna fluctuate from state to state. It's gonna fluctuate from country to country. But generally speaking, the average rule is around 50 megabits per second. So it doesn't matter when you decided to get gigabit ethernet or how long you've had it. Like I said, I've had it for the longest time. And it doesn't matter because that's the first thing you find out once you get really fast um, internet from your ISP. You start getting fiber and you start realizing, hey, a lot of these servers and services that I connect to aren't that fast. You connect to Netflix and you're like, why am I only pulling 45 megabits per second down? Hmm. So maybe their service or their CDN is limiting and throttling you because that's what they do. They have to be able to manage the traffic in a meaningful way when you literally have millions 
of nodes connecting to you at any given moment. You have to manage that traffic because all of it doesn't exist at one time. You have to be able to manage that throughput. So, but that's a technical enterprise kind of question that the average layman wouldn't understand, but it should be something that a developer should understand. I mean, it is what it is, I guess. So I see a lot of complaints comparing Switch to Wii U online and they're saying, hey, you used to have all this stuff for free and now you have to pay for it. First things first, Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack is completely optional. And I think that a, a lot of the, the gaslighting comes from that. A lot of the yelling and stumping from the YouTubers that you, you were here and see from uh, are people saying that you're forced to pay $50 a year for this. No, you don't. You can still pay the 20 and you can still play online. If you want those additional features, the subscription service of those virtual console games that some people said they want a subscription service for virtual console games is there for you. And there's free DLC for, um, for Animal Crossing as a bonus on top of that. You don't have to buy it. It's in addition to what you already have for the Nintendo Switch Online subscription service. You could just go with the $20 a year and keep that in perpetuity if you want. Or Nintendo will prorate it if you're already paying for the 20 and you can upgrade to the to the 50 if you want. And they'll start charging you 50 every year, one year from now. Your call, you don't have to do it. You can still pay $20 a year and still pay one third of what you pay for um, PS, PS Plus or Xbox Live Gold. That's still a thing. It's still one third of the price. If you're talking about, hey, well, then Wii U was free. Um, or in some cases, some people say, well, Switch Online was free. It was in a beta. It, it was highly unstable um, at that point. The app really had no features on it yet. And obviously that means that there was no, there was no voice chat or anything like that yet. Um, and there was no virtual console at all because virtual console didn't show up until the paid version was ready to launch in 2018. So what were you getting for free on Switch from 2017 to 2018 other than connecting to other people? Nothing. What were you getting for free on Wii U other than connecting to other people? Nothing. Because Netflix had an additional cost. Virtual console games were actually sold a la carte. You got nothing for free um, while, while having a Nintendo Network account. You were just able to play online for free. So what you're asking, what you're complaining about is having to pay $20 a year to connect to another Nintendo Switch Online, another Nintendo Network account. And in that sense, that's really an old and dated complaint because other consoles are charging you three times that amount to do the exact same thing. And in addition to your complaint about, hey, well, I get these AAA games. Those AAA games aren't really there anymore. If you look at what just came out for Xbox Live Gold, the games for gold, that's a pretty lackluster list there versus the virtual console games you get for $20 a year that are iconic classics for the NES and the Super NES. And some of those cartridges really go for anywhere between $200 and $300 a piece. So even if you wanted to collect and go back and buy this stuff yourself, instead of dealing with the emulated version, you're going to be paying. And I think the majority of this stuff comes from people were used to pirating and downloading these ROMs and playing them for free for so long. And a lot of these community based ROMs work really well. And some of them work better than Nintendo's own official stuff. So they feel like in their opinion, in their emotional opinion, that they should be getting it for far cheaper than that because they're able to get it for free from other people. But you're getting it for free from other people while they're breaking copyright. Why would Nintendo want to give you their IP for free in the same way that the emulation community does? If there was a way for Nintendo to do that, they would just hire everybody in the emulation community and then bring them in to resell it to you anyway. And then you will have all those quote unquote additional features that you championed for free when you were pirating said games um, and then go from there. And yeah, I get, I get the complaints. Yes, I'm speaking in general here because until I know that everybody 
has a ROM reader and they're literally copying every single cartridge that they own from Super Nintendo and NES and copying them to their own their own uh, server and then keeping all those ROMs and then emulating them that way. Uh, let's just speak in averages here. Nine times out of ten, the average person that is emulating this game, they're doing it for free and they never really owned those games. That's just generally speaking as a rule. So if I say piracy, generally speaking, that's what I'm talking about. If you're a specific person that actually went through all that trouble and you have ripped your own ROMs and whatnot and then you play them and emulate them in whatever way you want, okay, cool. Cool story. But you're not everybody. Uh, the whole goal was that the whole point being that even on Wii U, what you got wasn't free because a lot of the complaint goes and says, well, I got virtual console on Wii and Wii U. No, you didn't. You had to pay for it. It was not free. You had to pay for it. And a lot of the emulation issues on Wii U exist on Switch, which a lot of people found out after a little bit of digging further than jumping up and down and saying that it's bad on Switch. Yeah, it was bad on Wii U too. And y'all said nothing. So... Yeah, but you paid for them a la carte anywhere between five, seven, eight dollars a piece on Wii and Wii U, depending on whether you bought them on Wii and had to transfer them to Wii U or whatnot, because you had to pay a dollar to two dollar premium if you wanted to play them with the exclusive Wii U features planted on the gamepad and stuff like that um, for specific versions of games that were on Virtual Console on Wii and also available on Wii U. So you would pay anywhere between five to seven or eight dollars for some of these games a piece. A virtual console collection of 50 games could easily run you $400 real quick um, and we're complaining about $20 a year and you easily have more ROMs than that on on the uh, on the virtual console for Nintendo switch online for the $20 version not even talking about the $50 version which provides even more consoles um, Genesis and N64 so it's, it's just really weird the value proposition that people are really asking for is so particular and it really comes from a place of how can I say this entitlement you've emulated these games for free for years let's, let's just let's just call a bird a bird you emulated them for free you're upset that you have to pay for them if you want them legally even though chances are if you're really complaining about this you're not going to buy them anyway and then you're upset that 26 million people are actively paying for it right now. And many people were signing up for the expansion pack just now. Why are you pocket watching? If you're really upset about the job that Nintendo is doing, then speak with your wallet and just don't pay for it. There's no reason for you to go out and then try to shame the people that are enjoying the content that they're providing in a legal way at that. So what, what exactly is the issue here? And I'll do a whole separate video on the whole legality loopholes of all of that and how there's really no way around that stuff because lawyers are smarter than average people. But um, whether or not they enforce it, that's a completely different story, but we'll talk about that when we come around to it. I only have so much time to stand in front of a camera and do stuff like this. So um, I just appreciate you guys um, being able to pay attention. But yeah. It is what it is. There's one more topic I was going to talk about, and it was just talking about the bandwidth versus latency because the whole goal of you measuring bandwidth was trying to see if you got high bandwidth uh, up or down to see if you're going to have latency in games or whatnot. And latency is going to depend on your friends because, like I mentioned earlier, the majority of these games are peer to peer. So, is the upstream, not downstream, upstream smooth enough, not latent? And by not latent, I mean a term known as jitter, which is latency over time. We don't care about one packet dropping. We care about multiple spikes and packets being thrown out as you manage your packets. And I guess the thing is that what I'm talking about right now is people just saying, oh, well, it's just lagging because I noticed a stutter in the game. No, what you really need to do is get a packet manager and take Wireshark and, and look at what's happening on your network. Preferably your home network before it leaves and goes out to the internet and figure out what package packets are being delayed before they even leave your house. Then see how they leave your house on your upstream and see what your upstream is, is uh, what delay is happening between your upstream and once it gets to Nintendo and back. 
a lot of the issues are other people. When you connect, there's another person that's wireless and they don't know how to set up their wireless connection and they've got a shitload of latency. So you play a game and there's a lot of skipping around because a lot of these games, they don't really implement rollback, rollback or anything like that. So you'll just have a stutter or a complete skip of what, of what the actual result will be of somebody's action in a game. And you can't really blame the network if it's just giving you garbage in, garbage out. It's really other people. So a lot of the times you will see me on Twitter retweeting people complaining about stuff that's happening while they're playing online. And the first thing I do is I retweet and I just say user error straight up. And I'm like, hey, all the people that you're playing with, did you vet these people? Do you know what their networks look like? Um, did they do a wireless survey if they're connecting wirelessly? Did they do a wired survey if they're connecting wired? Because there's attenuation on wired networks as well. You can have a complicated wire setup if you have too many routers and too many switches in your network. If you don't know how to, to configure your router or your switch. And you should have a switch in your network if you have a router in your network, but that's a whole another story. Um, your, your gateway that your ISP gives you should not be your router. Especially if you want to talk about, hey, managing packets and all that and talking about network connections and talking about console services, they shouldn't have to work around the jank that you have on your network. But like I said, that's going to be part of a longer project, which is ongoing because there's always changes whenever I try to do this video. I've got at least 40 gigs worth of video that I have to comb through and re-edit and add just because so many things change just from 802.11ac to 802.11ax. Um, and that's going to be coming in a, another video later on. But no, this whole video was about Nintendo Switch Online and why you don't hate it, because you don't. You hate Nintendo Switch as a console. And you hate Nintendo Switch as a console because all of the features that you complain about are system level features that were there when the Switch was envisioned. Nintendo Switch Online came after the fact. All those features that they had, they were pointing to features that were in the console. So if you don't like how Nintendo Switch Online is working for you, as long as you can connect Nintendo Switch Online is doing its job. If you're looking for other little system features such as voice chat groups and stuff like that, that means you don't like Switch as a console. You don't like the OS. You don't like the firmware. So one of two things need to happen. Either you need to homebrew your console, install an OS that you like instead of Horizon OS that Nintendo manages, or sell the console. Do you play games to have fun? Or to impress other people?